welcome flip clock fans. You're looking at the Enigmatic Copal 2 flip clock motor. Very common motor in our flip clocks, our vintage flip clocks. It's a synchronous motor, which means it uses the frequency of the electricity to determine the spin of the motor. So these motors, they fail sometimes, and so we have to lubricate them. This is going to explain why we have to lubricate them and how it works. It's going to be important if you're going to work on some of these motors. And this is a motor that I've taken off of a clock, and I'm going to destroy it for your benefit. And you can see in there, there's a lot of things going on, but right there in the middle, there's an axle. We, we tell you to drop oil down there to get to that axle. And I'm going to show you why that's the only thing that's going to work. Now, this is the gear on the other side. You don't often get to see that because there's usually a gear case there, and most of the time you're not going to try to get into that. Uh, there's risks involved there. But this one happens to have the gear case off. And we're going to remove that gear, this brass gear here, so that we can get access to this motor. It's going to help you see a little more closely how these motors work. There's been some misconceptions. There's been people trying to clean these motors. Uh, I did that in the beginning. I don't even think there might be uh, bearings in there or something like that. But all it is is a shaft. That's it. That's what it rotates on. This part here, it's got a strip in there, that's a magnet. This glued in there, it causes it to get magnetized, or it's magnetized, I should say. And it's just a rod that it spins on. So, we have to get oil down to that rod to get this clocked to working well. So we're going to look closely on, on how they might have done it in the beginning and why it's worked so well in the past. There's a washer on top there, a little metal washer, but that's it. there's a bushing under there. And it's a certain type of bushing. I'm going to break that apart and cut it open for you so you can see what this particular motor has for a bushing. There we see this metal part here. The people looking at it and think that's moving. That's not. That just causes the motor to have poles. That is, this is an 18-pole motor. So that will cause the motor to run at uh, 400 revolutions a minute if it's on 60 hertz. 333 and a third if you're on 50 hertz. And that's all about motors. Uh, I'm not a technician on motors. There's other websites that'll teach you stuff about that if you're so interested. So we're going to talk about how to get the oil down in there the best way. And you can see this has an indentation and it goes down into a well. So it's hard to get oil down in there. And there may be a better way to do it. So I'm going to try to help you with that. I'm using this Speedex oil, and it's good stuff, but it's also green. So it's going to help us to be able to visualize what's actually happening when we do this. So you can see, somehow I've got to get oil into there, and it's got to feed up that axle to get this thing lubricated. And that's going to be hard, and that's why it doesn't work all the time for some people. We don't want to flood this with oil, necessarily. It wouldn't work if it was completely flooded with oil. So you drop the oil in the back there with the idea that it's going to drip down and get to that well that we saw a minute ago. Again, you don't normally see that in a normal operation. You see how I'm moving that in and out? That actually gets it into the well. You can't pull a normal motor that far, but this is a normal motor. Now watch the motion. It comes out about a millimeter, and if I oil it and gently pull it out like that, it's going to help that oil get down into that well. Now you can over-pull those, and you can cause that to get a wobble in it. But generally you're not going to unless you're getting over-aggressive. So if I do a little pulling, that may encourage the motor to get oiled a little more quickly. Again, we've got to be patient. So if you would drop the oil down in there, and maybe do a couple light, pulls in and out, kind of pulse that oil into that well, and then spin it. And then if you can get the motor energized and then get it running with your finger, that's going to work itself down that axle. And you're going to get your motor working again. Again, this doesn't come off normally. You're not going to want to try to do that on a regular Basis opening up the gear case is something we have done. There's always possibility of causing major issues. 
So when I'm pulling this rotor out, the spinning part, we're going to call it the rotor, I can feel with that rod that there's an indention in there. There's a, there's a space. Now the thing is, on another motor I had, there was a bigger space, a bigger dent I could feel in there. We're going to punch this out and see. This is actually a little different than another one I used, uh, or I, another one that I abused, I should say, and tore apart. There you see kind of a cartridge that popped out, and there are two of those in there. There are two of these cartridges. It's a very interesting uh, way they've done that. Again, I did have another type that just had two bushings and an empty space. You think, well, maybe there was grease in there or something. This, there is no major empty space. The cartridge is the deal, and that's what it spins on. What actually is that? Well, I'm going to break one of those open so you can see. It turns out to be, so this has been busted open, it's a brass bushing with, that's been impregnated with oil. Now, if you look, you can see that that bushing is interesting. It looks like, well, it looks like a charcoal briquette. It's, been, it's metal powder that's been compressed. There is an, either an insert or a part there in the end that, uh, that is like pure brass. Now, there's the, you can see the charcoal, and they would have infused that with oil. I actually put oil on that one to see if it would soak in, but that there, that was either smelted that way or melted that way. Well, that's a real thin sleeve, so the axle will roll on that, and then the oil would gently and gradually leach out and get onto the axle. So these things have worked for 50 years, and eventually the oil ran out. So we're not going to be able to infuse this again with oil necessarily, but we're going to oil that and get the oil down in there. Well, I hope this was interesting. Thanks for taking the time.